Okay, so this is the Samsung NC10 netbook that I recently installed a uh, touchscreen into. And I've seen a few touchscreen videos before, quite a few people accuse them of being fake, so hopefully uh, this should show that uh, this isn't actually faked. Zooming out. And as you can see, no mouse has been uh, connected, and hand nowhere near the touchpad. Okay, so the touchscreen uh, in question uses a uh, an EGLX or an EGLX, not sure exactly how it's pronounced, uh, controller. Yes, fortunately. Uh, not using it particularly accurately because I uh, rather foolishly misplaced the stylus that uh, came with the touchscreen kit that I bought. Okay, so this is the company that uh, made the uh, control, or at least uh, appears to be, since that's what um, the hardware was detected as. Yeah, as I'd uh, previously mentioned, uh, I just bought a touchscreen kit which included the, the actual panel and uh, compatible controller. So as you can see, uh, I'm using uh, Fedora Linux with the GNOME 3 desktop. As far as conventional desktop environments go, this one seems to be reasonably well suited to uh, touch screens. So for example, certain actions which would be performed using the right mouse button, you can uh, simulate with a long press. So if I say press and hold a CD burner, then ask you want to add it to favorites or open it in a new window. Which is the operation we'll perform by right clicking on it. So I think Ubuntu Unity works in a similar way, so compared to uh, Microsoft Windows, I'd say that uh, some of the more modern Linux desktops are reasonably well suited to use of a touch screen. Obviously no, not in the same league as something like Apple iOS or Google Android. But for a, a conventional netbook, not bad. So the touchscreen in question uh, I purchased from a, uh, from a Google seller, which unfortunately I can't remember the name of. But I found that on eBay there are several sort of uh, sellers who will provide uh, touchscreen kits. I can vouch for all of them, but the experience I had with the uh, one that I used um, has been quite positive. Uh, touchscreen reasonably responsive. Yes, it is a resistive touchscreen. Uh, I don't think you can get capacitive uh, screens for, uh, for netbooks like these, but even then, a capac uh, I'm not sure exactly how much of an advantage a uh, capacitive would be for a device like this. As far as resistive screens go, this one isn't uh, bad. Yeah, sorry about the uh, light changing. My camera phone is not particularly well suited to uh, doing this kind of video. Okay, so if you are going to be using GNOME 3 with a touchscreen, 
on a fairly frequent basis or even GNOME 2, it would be highly advisable to change the method of folder selection from double click to single click, which is easily done through preferences. Although unfortunately this is where uh, netbooks show their limitations, bottom of the preferences window does get cut off. Which is the point when I end up having to use the mouse to close it. So on the behavior tab, simply select single click to, uh, to open items. And now without use of the uh, touch screen. Which is much easier than double clicking. Okay, so our touch screen ended up taking me uh, much longer than I'd thought uh, it would take to actually install. So I couldn't do a hard, uh, hardware installation video. Although one thing that I think I should point out is be very careful how you route the, uh, the cables internally. I'm not sure how easy it is to see, but underneath this vent I have the touch screen controller and obviously several fairly long wires. Uh, the NC10 doesn't have much space in its case. Obviously the controller uh, just about uh, fits. But first couple of times I tried installing it, uh, I found that it's very easy, in fact dangerously easy, to get uh, wires caught underneath the mm, pedestals or mount points, mm, whatever they are for the screws that keep the case together. I don't know, I'm not an engineer. <laughs> so of course uh, you can risk, uh, anyway, you can risk damaging the uh, damaging the wires, which fortunately I did. Um, damage wasn't too severe. But uh, still something that you should be uh, quite careful of. Um, and another thing about the touchscreen kits, most of them include uh, Something that uh, well, I can only describe as looking a little bit like a guitar plectrum, which uh, you can use to prise the cases open because these things are not very easy to uh, to get into. And another thing that you should be careful of: firstly, make sure that you get the touchscreen uh, position somewhere that you will be completely happy with. Unfortunately, the uh, the bottom of it uh, is visible at the uh, bottom of the screen easel, and uh, as much as I tried to uh, to clean the monitor, uh, clean the TFT panel before um, actually putting the touch screen over overlay over this, um, there were still a few random bits of uh, dirt dust various other bits of detritus, occasionally visible, but, and now it's stuck there. So um, if you are particular about making sure your monitors are clean, if, uh, if you get something stuck under the touch screen, you're going to be stuck with it forever. So that aside, uh, it's a modification that uh, I'm overall quite uh, happy with. Uh, the touchscreen uh, kit in question, I think I managed to pick up for about £35, and, was uh, and that was including the delivery, so they're not especially expensive. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, so if you do uh, want to, uh, to install a touchscreen in, uh, in a netbook or similar device, uh, hopefully take those um, issues on board and uh, do a better job of it than I did.
Okay, thanks for watching.